Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we have got a brand new restaurant to review for you guys. Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill just opened in Disney Springs and Walt Disney World last week. Let me see, was it last week? Maybe a week and a half ago. Thanksgiving's messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> but we were there on opening day. We were actually the first people through the door. We were the first diners in the restaurant the day that it opened. And we got a chance to try a bunch of great eats. And I want to share them with you and let you know what we thought of Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill. So let's get started. Okay, Disney World fans will know that Wolfgang Puck is not a new presence in Disney Springs or even downtown Disney. He's been around for a long, long time in this area, in this space. You've got the Wolfgang Puck Express counter service location, which is over there in the marketplace. And there used to be a second one in West Side that just got bulldozed for Haleo. And of course, Wolfgang also had the Grand Cafe and the dining room, the upstairs dining room, two separate restaurants in Disney Springs right next to the old Wolfgang Puck Express in the west side. So those are both gone now. And like I said, Haleo is coming up in its place, which should be opening very soon. But um, Chef Puck opened a new restaurant right across from Chicken Guy, sort of right next to that big shopping colonnade in Disney Springs in the town center. And this is his bar and grill. And so here you're gonna see a few of the old favorite dishes from the previous restaurants, but there's also plenty of new stuff to try. There's an outdoor gelato bar and sweet stop where which is basically a walk-up window and there are several new items to choose from on the menu so here we go when you first arrive you're going to see a very different atmosphere than what you had in the old grand cafe so the grand cafe if you guys remember was basically like a saved by the bell set i mean just down to a t that was the kind of feel if you guys know saved by the bell <laughs> some of you may be too young for that but it was sort of modern i guess for the 90s but not really that modern for the new millennium so the feel of the new Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill when you walk inside, it's kind of like you're in a restoration hardware store. <laughs> There's a lot of exposed beams. There's red leather. I almost feel like you're in a farmhouse. It's very farmhousey feel. The space is very wide open and separated by sort of hanging doors and, and hanging windows and walls. So it almost looks modular in feel. The tables and the beams are light wood. It's a very open and airy feel. It's kind of just, you know, modern restaurant design, very, very similar to what you'd expect in, you know, just about any other restaurant opening in the Springs at this time frame. Although I don't see any exposed brick, so there you go. Maybe there is some there, but I didn't see any. When you first walk in to your left is the pizza kitchen, like the pizza oven. And then to your right is the bakery and gelato bar, which is a walk-up window, like I said before. Way in the back, you can see an open kitchen. And then the bar is to your left in the back as well. One thing that's really striking and clearly a centerpiece here is their light fixtures. They did a lot of great things with light fixtures. They're very prominent and very nice to look at. So heading on to the menu. If you look at the menu, if you first look at it, it almost looks like an Italian restaurant menu. There's of course Wolfgang's famous pizzas. You've got an entire pasta section and you do see some Italian staples in the other sections as well. But you do see some of the classic chef puck entrees here like the chicken schnitzel is back. That pan roasted half chicken is there as well. And a few other options that are returning from previous puck menus, of course. Pricing here is going to be very similar to what you're gonna see at other moderately priced restaurants around Disney Springs. So very similar to pricing over at Chef Art Smith's Homecoming, and also very similar to pricing at Via Napoli and Epcot, but actually slightly less expensive than Via Napoli. So that's the kind of price range you're in here. Very nice for a date night. Night, very nice for a family outing to a restaurant. This probably isn't where you're gonna go for, you know, it's it's not a it's not comparable to Victorian Alberts or anything like that, but it's good food at actually decent prices for Disney Springs. So let's dive into what we actually ordered. First up, we'll start with their mixology and their cocktails. I did get a chance to speak to the beverage director. He was, of course, very excited about their mixology program, and it's a good one. We chose three drinks on our visit. The first was the Lily Bell, which, of course, is named for Walt Disney's wife. The Lily Bell is going to have gin, Aperol, sparkling rosé, and lemon. Gin is very hot right now. We're seeing that across lots of different menus, but you can see some more classic flavors being used here with the rosé 
rosé and the lemon. Next up, we tried the Garden of Eden, which is house-infused vodka, tea, and lemon. This is sort of a grown-up Arnold Palmer. Sorry, I can't really say that. Arnold Palmer, according to the bartender we spoke with. And they do infuse that vodka in-house, and so it gives that strong tea flavor. This one was fine. It was pretty watered down by the time I actually drank it because I'd taken so many pictures and videos of it. So with that ice in there, it was a little bit watered down, but that was my only criticism, I think, of any of the drinks that I had here. And then finally, I grabbed the Papa Doble, which is also known as the Hemingway Daiquiri. This one is rum, maraschino, and grapefruit. Tart and bitter. Definitely the strongest of the three that I tried. Still a cocktail, but add some good punch to it for sure. All right, on to appetizers. We, of course, tried the artisanal salumi. This is the small portion that we got here, which is still pretty large. The meats here were incredible. We were a little sorry to see such a lack of cheese on here, though we wanted several more cheeses and more of the cheeses. So I think that's our only criticism of this one, but it's a decent board and worth getting, especially if your big focus is the charcuterie, so the meats. Next up, we tried the tempura calamari and shrimp. This was really, really good. The breading on here was nicely seasoned, nicely flavored flavored. I always thought I hated calamari until I started eating it and then I was like wow calamari is really good right as long as you as long as you bread it and fry it in the right stuff. Anyway it was delicious we really like this definitely worth ordering if you're a calamari fan. The local burrata was awesome a good sort of light start to your meal for sure especially if you are a cheese fan of course. And then moving on to sort of entrees we did order a pepperoni pizza because we wanted to see how the pizzas were translated from Grand Cafe and Wolfgang Puck Express frankly, over here to the bar and grill. This one definitely felt more like a Wolfgang Puck Express pizza than Grand Cafe. I didn't love it personally, and again, I tried the pepperoni, which is pretty classic, but it didn't seem to me like it was that much better than what you would get over at Wolfgang Puck Express, so I don't know that I'd go with pizzas here. But again, I've just tried the one, so I'll be back to try some others. Let me know what you guys think if you've had it in the comments, for sure. But this was the one thing on the menu that sort of, uh, or at least that we ordered, that it sort of felt flat. You know, I wished I wished this had been more. If this was my experience, this was the only thing I ordered at Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill, I probably wouldn't go back. Now the pasta was absolutely incredible. We got a chance to talk to the executive chef there and he actually came over from one of Chef Puck's restaurants in Vegas. So he moved his whole family over to Orlando for this, for the opening of this restaurant. And he said he really searched the local farms to find the right fit in terms of eggs. Eggs were his big focus. And and he finally found a farm with some really, really great, fresh, healthy eggs. And that's what gives this pasta the strong yellow color that you see are those really healthy, really fresh egg yolks. So the pumpkin ravioli was truly awesome. Again, Wolfgang Puck is very famous for his butternut squash ravioli. Pumpkin ravioli, not too far off the mark. This brown butter, sage, and hazelnuts here. And then, of course, that great flavorful cheese. This was killer, you guys. Definitely, definitely order this if you have the opportunity. And the popper doll was also on our list. And this one had a rich bolognese meat sauce, ricotta salata. So good. Just so good. I wish I could have eaten the whole thing. Of course, I couldn't because I had so many other things to try. But it was just excellent. Delicious pasta. If, you, if you're here and you're in the mood for pasta, go for it. Next up, I headed over to the sandwich section. I got the grilled chicken sandwich, which I know sounds super boring because why would you ever order a grilled chicken sandwich? But I was shocked. Yes, this was amazing. It was really, really good. Now this one is topped with avocado, bacon, white cheddar cheese, tomato, red onion, and pesto aioli, and it was amazing. The aioli, I think, is what really drove it home for me. I mean, the aioli sort of soaked into the bun, brought so much flavor, and the chicken itself was flavorful, which usually it's either super dry and not at all, or there's just no flavor, even if it's not even super dry. This was excellent. Surprised me. I still don't know if I'd say, you know, forego everything else on the menu to get the grilled chicken sandwich, but if you're a grilled chicken sandwich fan, this one is going to hit the spot for you. All right, next up, we grab the Mesquite Grilled New York Strip Steak and Frites. There's the steak frites over here. And the sauce on the side here is listed as a green peppercorn sauce, but that might actually be that sort of butter on the top. The green on the side tasted very much like a pesto. We were told it was a chimichurri. It was delicious. The steak here was awesome. Really, really excellent. I think the price here is a little off the mark. They've got it priced at about 49 bucks, I think, which is a little bit high for this particular restaurant. It's definitely the most expensive thing on the menu. And when you've got Wine Bar George, 
gorge with that incredible steak frites for 16 bucks for lunch, like next door, this isn't worth $49 if you can get that steak frites at Wine Bar George. It's still an excellent meal. I think if you're super in the mood for steak and you happen to be at this restaurant, it's worth getting because it's delicious, but that price point is a little bit high when you consider the other steaks you can get in Walt Disney World for that price point. Hope that makes sense. Okay, on to dessert. This is a hard road to hoe because Wolfgang Puck Grand Cafe had the best carrot cake on the planet. I loved it. And so they've got carrot cake on this menu and we tried it, but it's not the same. So let's start there. Here's a little picture of the old carrot cake from Wolfgang Puck Grand Cafe, which was amazing. Now the new carrot cake is similar. It's gonna be a smaller portion and you do still have the candied walnuts, which is great. You actually get a bonus salted caramel gelato on here. Here. It looks like there's not as much frosting, which of course is my go-to, but there are, you know, they do have some extra little piles of frosting around here, so maybe there's enough for you. This was good. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with this carrot cake. It's just not the same, so I wanted to call your attention to that it's not the same, but it's still really good. We also tried the key lime creme brulee with graham cracker crumbs. Excellent. If you're a creme brulee fan, key lime fan, great combination of the two here. And then the baked Alaska. This one is layers of chocolate cake, chocolate cherry chunk gelato, chocolate gelato, and toasted meringue. Very small portion, but very rich. So this is good if you're just in the mood for a little something. And then heading outside to the gelato bar. This I think is gonna be really, really popular in Disney Springs. Um, it is a walk-up bar, but you've got such intriguing flavors like butter pecan, panna cotta, the dark cherry chocolate chunk, um, that caramel sea salt, of course, and the toppings are interesting too. You've got standard stuff like chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, but you've also got Sicilian pistachios, Nutella, local blueberries and local raspberries along with a bunch of other options so really liking the offerings here right off the bat over here you've also got little to-go cups of kind of Wolfgang Puck specialty desserts like their creme brulee rice crispy treats and brownie bites tapioca and a little cupcake as well which is fun but for me the thing to get here they have alcoholic gelato milkshakes basically the one I tried is called the Mortimer's Margarita with lime sorbet, tequila, and triple sec. It is crazy good. So, so, so good. I don't know why it's so good, but it's delicious. Maybe I've never had an ice cream margarita before, but you guys, it was awesome. So definitely look at those grown-up alcoholic milkshake situations. They're great. And again, this is a walk-up window, so you don't have to have a reservation. You can just walk up and grab this at any time. So overall, I think this is an excellent option for Disney Springs. All the food I had was delicious. I was a little disappointed in the pizza, but that's because I felt like it could have been, it could have been a lot better than it was. But everything was delicious. It was a good atmosphere, a good feeling in the restaurant. Decor itself is non-offensive. So, you know, that's great. So like I said, I only had one experience there so far. I will definitely be eating there again and seeing if I can sort of shape a little bit more my review of it and let you guys know which of those moderately priced restaurants I think is the winner in Disney Springs. But for now, they're all great and they're all worth a visit. Just giving you our thoughts, hoping that that's helpful to you as you plan your trip. All right, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog and we'll see you real soon.